Hello everyone, welcome back to Stick Volley. We are here for the All-Star Game of Season 3. And let's go over the players real quick. I'm going to pass it down to Patrick. Okay, for the first team All-Stars, we have Championship Goalie Gus Graham. For the Attacker, we have the Season 3 MVP Frank Hill. Defender 2, Wayne Morris. Defender 3 is another champion. Season 3, Benjamin Hartman. Defender 4, Edgar Novak. Defender 5, Josh Sutton. And Defender 6, Elian Dyer. And now we're going to pass it down to our other guest, Timmy, to go over the second team All-Stars. Representing the Season 3 All-Star second team is goalie Silas Christensen. Attacker... Travis Cole. Defender number two, Billy Long. Defender number three, Blake Moore. Defender number four, Dalton Hutchinson. Defender number five, Davion Nolan. And defender number six, Chris Nicholson. All right, and now that we got all the players introduced, it is time to see some good stick volley. Here we go for face-off. That one is between Travis Cole and Frank Hill. Here we go. We're in the back. These with two Williams. attackers, Frank Hill and Travis Cole, were the two front runners for MVP. So there's going to be a uh, a little bit of a rivalry in this game. Yes, that is true. That is true. Both of them actually are retiring too. This is it. This is their last official Stick Valley game. It's crazy to think about. We got a ball now moving in the back of first team all stars. The first of many for uh, Benjamin Hartman. What yeah. a great rookie season he had this year. Fantastic rookie season. And his bond with Donald Barnes has been fantastic. And Gus Graham has been amazing. It's been amazing to see. So we'll see. Donald Barnes getting near the end, I think. A couple more year seasons. So I was Christensen trying to get a hit. It's Frank Hill hitting into his own teammates. We're in the back here with Billy Long. One really good thing to note is there probably won't be as many own goals because these are all seasoned defensemen. They, yeah. uh, they know how to take care of the ball. That is true. That is true. We've seen a lot of own goals, and there's a shot by Frank Hill. And a lot of own goals causing teams to lose. Stray ball. It's turned over there by second team All Stars. Like we said earlier this season, that's not not only, always the worst possible thing. Sometimes it's better to just get it into the offensive zone. Yeah, and as you said, these oh, but a hard shot. These defenders are all All Stars, so they know when to turn this ball over and strategically. But this could be a goal. Gus Graham with the shot. It's gonna go out. Oh no, it's not. This could be a goal. Gus Graham. 1-0 first team all-stars Gus Grant with the amazing play showing why he's a first team all-star Wow that took a wild bounce off the crossbar it seemed to just stop that had some crazy spin on it this one I thought it was going out of play to be honest the net over there just bouncing the ball around and look at this Chris Nicholson turning that one over like like it's a, a piece of slippery butter Oh, Gus Graham trying to get that one, but Travis Cole hits it backwards. It's going to go out of play. Travis Cole not too happy about the championship game, but Do Frank Hill? Oh, jeez. He broke the net. What the heck? What was that? That one's hit backwards, though. That was Josh Sutton. This guy hit the crossbar. Go just out of play. Man. Crazy seasons. We have a special guest on today, though, commentating. Timmy. Uh, are you there, Tim? Yes, I am. So, uh, how, what team are you uh, here supporting? Um, 
I want to be nonpartisan and root for every team to see how all of these players play. Okay, okay. And one player I would like to spot out is um, season three or er, yeah, season three MVP Frank Hill on. He had a remarkable season. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Ten goals. Oh, that's a hard shot though. Gus Graham. Another player to watch out for is Gus Graham, up and coming second year player. You are not wrong. Fantastic season. Oh, Jimmy, how do you think the Clownfish are going to react uh, and come back next season without Frank Hill? If they do, if they do well in the draft, I don't think it will personally be that hard for them. But they need to get that solid attacker position back into where it used to be with Frank Hill. Yeah, that is true. Well, the Clownfish are the most represented team here today. They have three of the of the All Stars, which that's pretty impressive yeah. for one team. That is. Here's Gus Graham though. Can he get a hot shot? Gus Graham. He scores the own goal, but that would have been the hardest shot I think I ever seen in stick volley. What was that? Oh my! God. We clocked it at 86 <laughs> miles an hour. 86. That is nuts. He's gonna take off Silas Christian's head. Gus Graham could potentially be the new Carter Colson with the shots he has. Yeah, and he's got a championship at a young age. Experience is gonna be there when he's older. I'm excited to see his development. He's gonna be a fun player to watch. But back to those attackers for the Confish. There's a couple attackers in the draft, but this one's a back. A couple attackers in the draft. Uh coming out that look decent and but unlucky for them that they didn't get one of the attackers from the previous class because there were some good ones in there and keeper smashers were able to get one to replace Travis Cole this season after this season that was hit back though yeah, Dax yeah the love. keyboard smashers thought ahead they drafted Dax love they kept all that cap space they drafted him and uh, it looks like it's gonna work out he had a full year to learn under Travis Cole which is definitely beneficial yeah and Travis Cole even said himself, he's in the tweet he put out the other day, that he uh, he taught him a lot of his techniques and all of it. This one's popped up to the two attackers. This is amazing to see two 31-year-old attackers having their best season ever, both making all-stars, making the championship, MVPs. This is just amazing to see. But Travis Cole, what a shot! That little tap he just gives. Amazing. Speaking of 31-year-olds, Carter Colson said he would have loved to have been here, but he's too busy on the beach with all his models. So, uh, yeah, I would not doubt that. Yeah. You know, Carter Colson. This definitely would have been a fun occasion for him, though. I would have loved to see Carter Colson out here, having fun out here with these guys one last time. But Frank Hill with an amazing shot. <laughs> what a goal. Two to one. Great chip. Great chip. That's a seasoned veteran. Oh, my goodness. This game is like very exciting for an all-star game, like as it should be. Is Don Hudson with the hit? I definitely think Frank Hill will go down as one of the best attackers to have ever played stick volley. Yeah, as of right now, he's probably he's probably one of the best at least. But that's hit backwards by Frank Hill as we talk about him. We're at twos. Oh, and Travis Cole just seemed to win that jump ball. It was uh, yeah, that was pretty impressive. Had that little extra reach to get it. But um, this game is going to five goals. We are not playing to three. I forgot to mention this. Five goals, and that will be it for the All-Star game. But then after this, we will have the season uh, four draft. But Travis Cole, the second team All-Star, is taking the three to two lead. Jeez. This is nuts. I mean, Morris here. Back to Travis Cole has a hard shot. This is, so far, this is the best All-Star game I think I've ever seen for Stick Volley. That one's hit up, Frank Hill. One very interesting thing to note is that neither of these players have started their careers with these teams, Frank Hill and Travis Cole. They, uh, Frank Hill was taken from the grounders in the expansion draft. And Travis Cole was just lost in free agency after the Grenadiers refused to sign him. Yeah. And now they're putting up career years. That is something. Look at this. Another one by Travis Cole. 4-2. to two. We're at match point already. 
Yeah, the grounders releasing Travis Cole kind of questionable, but then Jackson Fox having a fantastic season last year and kind of falling off this year, but I think he'll rebound. There's a couple uh, attackers that didn't do well, but this could be game, and that's game! Second team All-Stars win 5-2. to two. What the heck? Some great offensive performances right there. Some great plays by these guys. But before we end, what uh, who do you think is the season three All Star MVP? Uh, we'll start with you, Patrick. Who do you who do you think? Uh, season three MVP. Uh, season three All Star MVP from this game. I mean, Travis Cole looked like a great player out there. Travis Cole had some nice chips. I feel like he's uh, he's the best player. Okay, okay. How about you, Timmy? I also think Travis Cole has proved himself to be this All Star Game MVP. I I will have to agree. I think Travis Cole, he was having some great shots in there. But I think someone to note from this game was Chris Nicholson. I don't know how many turnovers he had, but he had a bunch of turnovers. Every time he got the ball, he made sure that ball was going to the other defense. That was something to note. He I think an good. honorable mention would be Gus Graham. Gus Graham oh, had yes. a lot of great shots in this game. He showed he can not only be a playmaker, but he's also sometimes a, uh, a scorer. That is true. He's proven himself right now. Maybe that's a hint for next season? Possibly? I think so. We'll I think see. So. That team's not going anywhere either. They, I don't think they lose anyone. But that will do it for the Season 3 All-Star Game. We'll see you next for the Season 4 Rookie Draft. With the first pick of the Season 2 Draft, the grounders select Silas Christensen, goalie. Oh, Silas Christensen, what a save! Oh my goodness. Silas Christensen making the season three second team all stars. Have a fantastic season. Second pick of the second round in the season two draft, the Grenadiers like Jackson Fox, attacker. Oh, Jackson Fox bringing the Grenadiers to their first ever final. Jackson Fox, your season two rookie of the season, having a fantastic season nine goals for him. Your first team all star attacker, Jackson Fox. What a season for this young guy. With the third pick in the season two draft, the Peacocks select Zach Goodman, attacker. With the third pick in the second round of the season two draft, the Peacocks select Kylie Burnett, Goalie. And the rookies have done it. They've won the first ever final for this expansion team. The Peacocks, your season two champion. Hello everyone and welcome back. We are here for the Season 4 Draft. Uh, we have a ton of rookies here this evening waiting to be drafted. 
by eight teams. But before we start, there's something we need to go over. There will be no second round this season. Only one team has doesn't have a first round pick, and that is the Lobster Backs. So they will be picking after the Majestic Turtle Chumps at the ninth pick in the draft. So quickly before we start, Metro Madness having the first two picks in the draft. Uh, I, what will they take? We don't know. But let's head down to the stage to see what the commissioner has to say. Metro Madness is now on the clock. Metro Madness, here's a team that uh, needs to get a goalie here. They just lost Carter Colson, and they need a goalie. Like, that is a definite. We know that's happening. But they have two first-round picks, the very first two. So let's see what they're going to pick. And it looks like their pick's already in. Let's see what they have. With the first pick of the Season 4 draft, the St. Paul Metro Madness pick, goalie Max Montgomery. Max Montgomery, this is a solid pick. The fans are very happy with this pick. He was a top two goalie going into the draft. And last season in college, his first freshman year, he won the Rod Bowl, was not able to make the Stick Bowl, but he did make the Rod Bowl, which was a very impressive. Uh, he had three goals, two assists in his first season in college as a freshman. That is just, that's rare to see when someone is playing that good as a freshman in college. And he had a he has a very weak shot, though. We've seen a lot of that in college. His shot was just not strong enough, not reaching the back of the net. But one thing I did see with this guy, his shots are very accurate. He can place them into the back of the net sometimes, even though they're not strong. But he can place them wherever he wants. He can set up players. He can hit off his defenders. He's very good with that. And I'm excited to see what he's going to do. His saves, on the other hand, are also very good. He's very crafty with the saves. Gets little touches on him, like able to just hit the crossbar and... He's just a very solid pick by Metro, and now Metro is going to be back up on the clock. Metro Madness is now on the clock. And Metro Madness is now back up on the clock with the second pick of the draft. We don't really know what they're going to take. Some people are thinking maybe an attacker, because Keith Jackson is leaving in three more seasons, so maybe develop an attacker, so when Keith Jackson's gone, or maybe a defender, but this team doesn't really need much, so I'm curious to what they're gonna pick in this pick and it looks like they already know so th let's head back down to the stage to see what they have to say with the second pick of the season four draft the St. Paul Metro man is pick defender number six Ali Arroyo Ali Arroyo See, the fans are actually clapping about this because Bobby Wilkinson has not done anything for this team. I don't even know if he scored a goal or an assist, but uh, Ali Arroyo, he's a solid player. He lost in the Rod Bowl this season, but he had a decent season. He can turn the ball over, which is pretty good for them, but the problem is he has the trouble of popping the ball up right in front of the attacker, and he has that problem a lot. So that could be a dangerous thing. He also has a tendency to try and hit it back which is it's fine to do but you just gotta be careful if he hits it too far to set up the goalie especially a rookie goalie but overall this is a solid solid pick for Metro Madness to get rid of Bobby Wilkinson and it's probably a little upgrade if if Ali Arroyo uh, pans out the way he's supposed to the Grenadiers are now on the clock here we go the Grenadiers are now up what are they gonna take here Chris Nicholson's contract is up, but will they re-sign him? They have a D6 that they drafted last season in Bryce Garza. But other than that, Joseph Young's contract's up, but I don't see them getting rid of him because he's a solid player. He's only 27 years old. He's got plenty of years left. Jackson Fox, they're a young talent, basically the franchise of this, the face of the franchise of this team. But the defense is solid. I don't know. This pick might just go to the bench. We'll see what they do here. With the third pick of the Season 4 draft, the Grenadiers pick Tristan Fraser. Mm -hmm. 
Whoa, Tristan Frazier going ahead of Anthony Austin. One of the top goalies with Max Montgomery. Those two were by far the top ones. But Tristan Frazier, the Grenadiers must have seen something we don't know. But what does this mean for Joseph Young now? Tristan Frazier, he's a decent player. He uses his defense really well. But the problem with him is his shots just go all over. If he has a solo shot, it can go all the way up or it can go straight into the other attacker. We don't know. But this is a really risky pick for the Grenadiers. I'm curious to see how this pans out. But it looks like the Peacocks are up next. The Peacocks are now on the clock. Alright, here we go. The Peacocks. What do they really need, though? This team has been solid the past two seasons they've been in the league, even though they did not make playoffs last season. They're going to be looking to make it this year, but the only Edward Hamilton is losing his contract. He's been playing pretty good. He's been playing okay, but this pick just might just go right to the bench. I don't see I don't see what they're going to pick here that can replace most of these guys, but we'll find out. Let's see what they have. With the fourth pick of the Season 4 draft, the Peacocks select Augustus McConnell, defender number five. Whoa, Augustus McConnell coming in. He's a decent player, defender number five, but he... Defender number fives are hard to judge. They're all pretty much equal in skill. Like, defender number fives are not different, but... Augustus McConnell. Edward Hamilton did not do much, though. The fans seem happy about this one. What we'll to see how they react to this one because he is good at getting the ball up to his defender six. But other than that, defender number fives, they don't really do much. You just have to be solid and not turn the ball over to the other attacker or flip it back to your goalie. And Augustus McConnell can have a tendency of doing that. The Clownfish are now on the clock. This is a Big pick for the Clownfish. Frank Hill retired now, so they definitely need an attacker. There's some big attackers out there. This is most definitely going to be an attacker because they don't need anything else. Attacker is what they're going to need, and a good attacker can get this team to the playoffs. With the fifth pick of the Season 4 draft, the Clownfish select Justin Corner. Whoa, Justin Corner? I mean, this does come to a surprise to us. He is a solid pick, let's not mistake in that. He's a very solid pick. He had 13 goals total in two seasons of college. But Justin Corner, you, like, Rodrigo Barrett was sitting there, by far the best prospect, and they took Justin Corner. I mean, that he's a great player. He has a great shot. He can pressure the defense, but this is just a surprise to all of us. To replace someone like Frank Hill, Justin Corner, I would not have expected this kind of guy. He's not like Frank Hill at all. Rodrigo Barrett, on the other hand, he's aggressive like Frank Hill was and all that. But for Justin Corner, a little bit careless and reckless when he plays but who knows maybe the clownfish are looking for something new here let's find out this season the grounders are now on the clock all right here we go the grounders what are they going to take here they need a defender five they picked up a defender six last season's draft so let's see what do they got picked this is most likely a defender five because there's re retired and it looks like their pick is already in let's head down to the stage With the sixth pick of the season four draft, the grounders select Larry Manning. Larry Manning, brother of keyboard smasher goalie Leland Manning, younger brother. Larry Manning's looking to prove himself in this league as a defender five, though. It's going to be tough for him. He's going to be struggling to prove himself because defender fives it's kind of hard to prove yourself as long as you just don't make a lot of mistakes but Larry Manning had a decent career in college um, he played one one season in college he was a freshman and he he had one goal 
So Larry Manning can look to to do something here. We'll see. He's he's decent at setting up the goalie, and he tries to set up the goalie a lot. But we'll see what he is in plan for this season. The keyboard smashers are now on the clock. All right, the keyboard smashers now on the clock. Looking at this roster, they don't need anything. This is just going to be a hopeful bench player for the future because Travis Cole did leave, but they planned ahead last draft and picked Dax Love, a future star, hopefully. that That's what they're hoping. So we'll see. This pick is most likely going to be on the bench for a little while. With the seventh pick of the season four draft, the keyboard smashers pick, Duncan Tang. Duncan Tangs. This comes a little surprise, I guess, but not a big surprise because this is just a fill-in player. They're not going to do much with him. Um, Duncan Tangs, solid D5. He had one goal last season in his college career, and he's a solid player. This team, I don't see them starting Duncan over... Um, Davion Nolan, but I guess you just never know. Uh, the fans, you know, they're they they're not mad about it. There's nothing much they can do. But I don't know the owner. He still sounds upset about that pl that finals loss. But looks like the majestic turtle chumps, the returning champs, are now up on the clock. The majestic turtle chumps are now on the clock. Majestic turtle chumps, another team that is just going to pick a player for the bench most likely. They have the space for it, but. Again, this is they don't really need much. They, their whole entire team will be returning, except they have to re-sign Derek Scottney. Uh, he's going to be 31 next season, so it's going to be his last season. But other than that, this team should be the same team as the championship team we just saw last season. Oh, and the pick is in. Let's go see what it is. With the eighth pick of the season four draft, the majestic turtle chumps. Picks Tyler Whitmer. Tyler Whitmore, a solid pick. I'm not too sure why the fans are booing. He is the oldest defender four out of this draft, though, tied with Grover McStewart. Um, but Tyler Whitmore, he's a solid player. The only thing is, he's also the most expensive one coming into this draft. I don't, I don't know if that was worth it. I don't think he's all that to be the most expensive to sign. But this could also indicate that they are just, they're just not gonna bring back Derek Scottney, who came off a three-goal season last year at 30 years old. I, I'm sure the fans wanted Scottney to to retire, a majestic turtle chump, but. Fans do not seem happy about this one, and I can kind of see why. But it looks like the lobster backs are going to be coming up next. The lobster backs are now on the clock. All right, the lobster backs. Uh, another team literally going to be picking for their bench. They li they have nothing here. They have a young defender, three and Oscar Cooper, who was a rookie last season. Jerry Rivera. Maybe they'll go after a goalie. Jerry Rivera. Um, he's going to be retiring after this season. He's going to be, he's 31 now. So this is it for him. Uh, but other than that, they are pretty young. Waldo, the second oldest at 29, going to be 30. But there's some goal, good goalies out there. Two of them already went, to Tristan Frazier and Max Montgomery. But there's still Anthony Austin sitting there, the top prospect of goalies. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Looks like their pick's in, too. The ninth pick in the season four draft, the Augusta Lobsterbacks select Gary Shields, defender number four. Gary Shields, a solid pick though. He sets up a lot of players really well. Um, he was the cheapest defender number four in the draft, so the Lobsterbacks got lucky with that one and. Yeah, he's a solid pick for this team. He sets up his goalie really well. Um, and in college, he had uh, three goals total in his two se in his two career seasons. 
but that's just a solid pick from the Lobster Backs, and that is actually going to conclude the Season 4 draft. Already, we're already up to Season 4, and if you guys like these videos, if you're supporting Stick Valley, please subscribe, like the video, join our Discord to become more engaged with the, the community of Stick Valley. We will be happy to have any of you. And yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you for week one of season four very soon.